Hey guys, it's Drew Brashler with DBB Audio. Welcome back. We are in the next video, video 102, which is naming our sources. If you haven't checked out my previous videos, make sure to go check out the overview of the Behringer Wing and also start with videos 101. Let's go ahead and dive in. Now, the easiest way of actually naming these sources is using the iPad tablet app called the Copilot. And I have that here on my iPad. And the best way of doing this is to grab your A2 and hand them an iPad after you set up a Wi-Fi network with your console and a router and give this to them while they go plug in inputs on the stage. And while they're plugging in inputs, tell them, hey, go find the input that you're plugging into and then label it on this iPad. And so we can see that right here. So I'm going to go to my AES50A, and we can see on my screen I have my DL32 connected there. And then on the iPad, I'm going to go find my AES50A. And so we can see here that I have my A1, and on here I have my A1. And so if I go and change the icon, it will automatically update that on the console. And if I go and name this, say this is kick in. And now it's labeled up here as kick in. Now, unfortunately, not all of us have an A2 that we can use or a Wi-Fi connected to our Behringer wing. So I'm going to show you next how to do it on the console. So to do any naming of our sources, which are the inputs now, because we remember that we don't want to think of it as an input channel, we want to think of it as an input source. And all the sources are found in our routing page by going and pressing routing, and then you have all of your source groups here, like your local in, AES50, and so on and so forth. If we want to label something, all we have to do is select a source group, select a channel, and then we can press rename, which is right here. And we can simply type it in here. Now, uh, this keyboard works very well. It is, it is touch sensitive and we have a caps lock key here or a simple shift key here. So if you wanted to title this wireless one, we can, and then we just simply press next. And maybe you want to title this one RF instead of wireless. So I went ahead and hit the caps lock and we have RF two and next RF three and next, and then lastly, RF4. Done, perfect. So I have my wireless one, RF2, RF3, RF4. Now, what if I wanted to change the color on this? All right, well, let's do that. So I'm gonna press my wireless one, and I am going to set this with a little icon that has the wireless, and just do that on all of these. And then I'm going to change the color. Maybe my wireless one is a lapel instead of a handheld, and then my RF two through four are going to be handhelds. And that's how we can simply keep all of this organized. And then the next thing is, what if I'm wanting to name my outputs? Well, the sources that those are in are actually internal on the board. And so to name those sources, we actually have to go into a different spot. And let's start out with our main left right bus. So to do that, I'm going to press my main and I'm going to press select and then I'm going to press home. And I am here now viewing my main bus, which is my main bus one. And we can see here that when I have home selected, I have an icon and color and then a name. So I can call this main left right. And then if I press next, it go automatically goes to the next channel or I can simply tap on the icon and color. So I'm gonna go back to my main left, right, and maybe make this blue, and I can either turn on the light or turn off the light. Now, additionally, I can do that to my bus masters, which I can do on the left side or the center or even the right side of the board. So if we were to do this on the left side, we can hit bus masters, and we can see that I have mix buses one through 12 here, but there are actually 16 mix buses on this console. So we can see that there's a arrow four and an arrow four here, and I can use these to navigate to my other buses. And we can see this here. I will turn up 13 through 16, and I'll arrow back over to one through 12. There we go. So to name a bus, we can simply select one of the buses and it comes up up here and we can name this maybe drums. And then my next will be my parallel drum bus, which will be drums and then two cymbals. 
Okay, so I have my drums and my drum parallel compression. Now what about DCAs? DCAs are actually a little bit more tricky to name because if we go and select a DCA, it actually makes it so that we can select what channels we want in this DCA, which is perfect if you're wanting to select some channels for this DCA. However, if we're wanting to name it, that's a little bit hard. So to do that, all we have to do is press the view button. And then up here, we get all of our DCAs. So we can see DCA 1 through 8, and then if we wanted to see 9 through 16, we can select any of them from the right side by 9 through 16. And you can actually page through all of the console this way. So to go to a DCA and rename it, we click that, and it's right here. So I'm going to call this Drum DCA and then press rename. And it will ask if you would like to rename it everywhere, and you would say yes. And so now I have my drum DCA right here. If I wanted to change the color, I go ahead and simply select a color, maybe an icon, and press close. And then if we actually wanted that light to turn on, which is one thing I forgot, we'd have to press the light right here. And that's as simple as it is to name all of our sources on the input side and the output side. Make sure to check out my next video, which is going to be how to actually assign a source to a channel on the wing.